Morning. I'm just making up a, a river scene here. A bit of the distant hills, uh, the usual trees coming. I want to try and do something with the lights. Instead of the nice sunny day, I want a bit more drama maybe. Bank of the river here, some reeds. Some. I, I'm going to use, if I can really get it in without the sky being too dark behind, some bluey mixed with our, our alizarin to show some distant foliage behind these trees here before I superimpose some wintry trees so we can have this bank coming out here um, probably a few rocks maybe in the water um, it's the usual method it's the uh, Fabriano 130 pound weight 15 inches by 11 my palette of lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, plains grey and burnt sienna. I don't know if any of you have, uh, have been following uh, Paul Taggart. I got an email to a link to one of his videos where he's explaining uh, what's happened to his channel. He's had some of his videos uh, stolen and uploaded to another channel. And he's, he's lost his YouTube standing and I don't know, understand everything that's going, going on here. But most of his videos have been deleted. So if, you, if you're interested in, in what goes on and you, or you upload videos yourself, have a check on his uh, video, see what he has to say. Um, his name is Paul Taggart, he's a very, very fine demonstrator. So um, I wouldn't have thought this would happen, but uh, that's why I'm putting my face, or making sure my face is on all my videos, just in case. It makes it harder to upload and nick. Steal the copyright. Right, I'm going to wet the paper all over. I don't know what the atmosphere is today, it's very dull, very warm. And yesterday I tried to do some painting, but the, pa the, the paper dried just so quick I gave up. Right, okay, so uh, raw sienna. Just, just put some in the, uh, on the paper, all over, just it gives a nice bit of warm behind the clouds. A bit of red, I think, maybe. A bit of red, a bit of yellow. Now I'll mix a cloud of um, paint. Uh, not, uh, yes, I'll use Payne's Grey. I have been using uh, the uh, Ultramarine and, and Payne's Grey. It does do a good job, but I'm going to go back to basics here with this one, with the alizarin. Not too much water on this. But you want you want some. It's a bit darker than that I think. Nice dark down there because that's you're looking at into the when you look down you're looking at the overhead reflection. When the paper's wet like this, you can you can do all sorts of things with it. I don't know if this will work. I need a bit of alizarin, a bit of ultramarine. Probably too wet, but I'll try it. Oh, we'll just drop some of this in here and some here. Now I need to re-wet this bit here, that's gone, gone a bit wrong there. Right, I'm going to re-clip the paper. Oops. I 
Okay, clean the brush, mop up the water there. I'll, I'm going to, um, now you can see where it's dried here. I'll go just to dry that off a bit. I'll just, so if you're listening on headphones, take them off. And the sky couldn't be simpler, could it? <coughs> right, now I'm going to put in some background. I'll use a general mix of those colours, a bit, bit of blue though, in this distance here. Just some hills in the background. I'll mix a few different colours in with, with that, down to the horizon. A uh, bit of a bit of yellow, and so we'll put a bit of a a field going across here. Okay. Now, because that's nice. Uh, it's dry, the water's dropped down to dry, a dry bit of paper there, so we can exploit that. There's a bit of uh, burnt sienna and a bit of ultramarine. I'll just crop in some, oops, need more blue in that. So the dark will congregate around the horizon there. and dark. The ultramarine with the burnt sienna makes a really rich dark bluey green. It's it's a lovely colour. Oh well, I like it anyway. Okay. Now, we always have a cup of tea standing by because one gets dry. Lovely. Right, I'll dry that off. Headphones off. We've got a nasty bit of a flow back there. Let's just re-wet that. See if we can clear that out a bit. That's better. Dry. With some of the more expensive papers, like papers like Archer's Arch, Archer, Archer. You can soak the paper in a bath or some uh, like an inch of water in a bath and, and, and scrub the colour off it, most of it will come out. But you can't do it with the cheaper papers very easily. So I'm going to put in now some um, some nice uh, tree trunks. I'm going to use ultramarine and burnt sienna. A sort of a grey. Uh, this Norway, based on my local river, of course, the, the River Wandel which runs from Croydon to the Thames. 
very lovely, but it does disguise a, a harsher urban landscape behind and factories and not very nice housing. But in, in summer, it, it's lovely because the green, the, the leaves on the trees disguises. This is a very busy river. Now I've got to think about wind turbines and stuff. We haven't really got room or space for our landscape. But on this river, it's 16 miles long. Oh, sorry, Bill, if you're listening. Um, there used to be something like 90 mills, water mills, in the Victorian Industrial Revolution. Let's just put some stuff in here. Bit of green. Um, and a friend of mine suggested. What a waste of all that energy, a fast flying chalk stream and there's a lot of water in it and we do get a lot of rain from time to time, it's always flowing and it wouldn't be beyond the wit of mankind to put a few water turbines in, not, wind, not uh, windmill, uh, water wheels but turbines, I saw a program on telly the other night, repeat, of a, the, the restoration of a, a leaking turbine that had been powering, well working s since, uh, well, halfway through the 19th century. And the only thing that was wrong with it was it had a, a leak inside on, on, the, on the turbine place, or it kept the water going where it should. And They prized it apart, the engineers, and put it all back together again with a repaired or replacement part, and it worked perfectly. So it'll go for another 150 years, and it's producing all that energy out of something that is there that is far more reliable than the wind and the sun. It's water, water. We've got a wet country, basically. We've got it all coming over from wonderful America. Across the Atlantic and Cornwall, and yeah, it makes you think, doesn't it? Waffle, waffle. Right, now I'm going to put, use my card. I think because I, I, I love the English landscape, because that's all I've got, um, I tend to be rather sensitive about what happens to it because I like to paint it. It means something to me. It's not just a cloud over a, a bit of green. It represents texture and um, exciting things going on. And I love it. And yeah, we've got the beautiful Lake District, we've got the national parks in, in Devon, Cornwall, Somerset, because I'm south. But then we've got the wonderful Lake District of beautiful Scotland, lovely vast mountains and hills. You know, we're spoiled for choice, but but there seems to be this desire to build over it all and ruin it for generations to come. And I and I this is I'm just painting my protest. I could put something behind there, so I'll put something like a bit of bit of raw sienna, I think. And a bit of yellow. Uh, it's just it's like a field going across here. Okay, All right, that's one. That's one side of my river. I like my banks going out and going zigzagging rather than really nice and smooth. The other side, I, I've got to resist the temptation to repeat on the right what I'm doing on the left. So, oh, that the tree, trees going, going out here as well. But 
along the wall, look, you've got lots and lots of huge willows. And you only realise how big they are when, when they get struck by lightning, which they do, and they fall down over the river. And they're huge, tons and tons and tons. You just have to be thankful that we weren't riding our bikes as they came down. I do tend to paint more into the light, as you said, that's why my trees are darker rather than a heavy grey. Uh, but I'm just trying to put a bit of green, green in, in these. Which a bit of greedy grey, which would be more accurate. So we'll have more on this side. I'm mixing a lot of burnt sienna with the with the blue because it, it it's a lovely warm dark. Well, it depends on how much blue and how much uh, sienna you put in burnt sienna. But burnt sienna is a lovely warm colour to be used as you come forward. It mixes with the green. On that, so just a little bit dry. So, first yellow, bit of blue, bit of yellow. I haven't uh, used any of the uh, Payne's grey. It could almost be a lake, couldn't it? Right, a bit of a rig up now. I've got to put the canopy on these, but before I do, where's my little card? My little card. I've got cards lining up to be cut. <coughs> Small as you go to the balls the back. Lovely overdoing all this. Nice warm, rich, dark there. Now I've got a, a small rigger, and I'm just going to lift up some. Well, I need a bit of water on it. No, I'll, I'll use the other rigger. That's very thin. Now it hasn't got too many hairs left. A bit like me. All right, let's just. Just showing some reflections. I'm going to darken all this and put a bit of a reflection in there. But just just putting some flicks, flicks and flourishes, just to 
show some foliage. Get it right, the rigger is uh, a great brush for, for doing this. I should, that um, background didn't really turn out too well, did it? So I'm just going to put it back. That's what I had in mind, something like that, just to show. some foliage in the background. There wasn't supposed to be a cloud, it was supposed to be distant or foliage behind the, the front. It's, I'm trying to put it into the rear to show something going on back there. So, and then we can put in some bluey twigs and branches, trunks. Well, just something going on there. It's my shorthand for doing loads of tricks. But I usually do this as you know with, with the height, but it's, but it's nice to have a change. Let's put some of that in here. I prefer doing uh, these sort of trees to the the, lo the lo loaded ones. I could, um, which I might do, put in a few twigs and leaves with um, I said Let's get some darks in there. Use a really thick paint now, it's all nice and soft. detail in the background there. Right, I'm going to dry that off. Earphones off. Bit of tea. Little block there that can 
be a bird. Right, I'm going to re-wet the paper on the, where, the, where the water is and, and And I, I can just drop in there, a bit of green. Then we'll put some sky colours. Alizarin and the paint grey. Okay. Uh, a couple of birds, some voids, very faint, and one right in the middle. Not a good place to be. Uh, Oh, that'll do. I don't, I'm going to put a little figure in there. Don't even need to. Sign it. Well, I'll put that in a mount and we'll have a look, see, see, uh, see what it's like. I'll put it in a blue, blue mount. So there we are, we've got a simple uh, river scene, water scene, stream, it's absolutely not uh, urban. Now there, I've got some very dark, almost neat paint out of the tube, that's how it works out. Um, I'll just uh, put my mug in it, I've got, I'm listening to my radio as well. Talking to you, it's talk radio, it's LBC for, you, for those in the UK that know LBC. Keeps me amused. Uh, right, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll, uh, I'll zoom in. Oh no, they're zooming out. All right, okay. There we are, it's just a nice rural type of scene. Could be even be after a flood, couldn't it? Like the Somerset levels with. Uh, the moors in the background, or the hills, and yeah, I, I, I like that. I, for, I forgot all about the floods we painted last winter. We had terrible floods. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry for my rabbiting. Bye bye.